Now that we've downloaded our .stl file from Tinkercad, it's time to slice that file so that the 3D printer can read it. To do that, we use a software called Launchpad. You can access Launchpad on OCSB Central by searching in your thumbnails or just clicking in the search field and typing in Launch or Launchpad and you'll see a little gray rocket ship thumbnail pop up. Click into that and it's now time to slice our file. You'll notice that Launchpad looks similar to Tinkercad but with the work plane, but it is just a platform where we are telling the 3D printer exactly how to print this and slice this and layer this. So you'll see at the top right hand corner, there's an import button. I want to import that Julian's nameplate .stl onto Launchpad and then slice it. So I'm going to click on import. I'm going to find that Julian nameplate .stl file and then I'm going to click open. Once I do so, you'll see it pop up in yellow. So here's my design. I can see what it's going to look like and doesn't matter what color it pops up in because really when you're printing on the 3D printer, it will come out as the same color as the filament. So now that we've imported our .stl file onto Tinker onto Launchpad, we now want to slice it. But before you slice it, at the top of your screen, you want to make sure that you're slicing it according to the correct device. The device that I'll be using is called the Cubicon Style. Now, you can double check which device you have. And if you just hover over, you have a little visual of what 3D printer you might be using. The ones that we currently have across the OCSB are the Cubicon Style for elementary schools, the Cubicon Style Plus for elementary schools, or the Cubicon Single Plus for high schools. Right now, I'm just using the Cubicon Style. So once I click that and click X, I can see here that it's now programmed to Cubicon.Style. I'm now ready to slice it. When I slice it, you'll see at the top, it just loads and renders, and it will show you now, when you zoom in, what your 3D design is going to look like. And if you can see all of these lines, those are just how many lines and layers are going to be used when the filament is coming out of the extruder nozzle. So I think this project might take a little bit of time because there are so many layers. So now I'm ready to finally export this. This is the last step that I have to do before 3D printing. Now, if you have a USB stick, this is the moment that you want to plug that in. So I'm going to plug in the USB stick that came with my 3D printer. And you can see the device is detected. Now, I'm going to hover beside the slice button and click on export. Once you do that, it's going to render it again, and you're going to be prompted to confirm some of the options in this menu before download. So I just want to make note of one thing, which is the filament density. It's preset to 1.25, but the filament that we use at the OCSB is actually 1.75. So you just want to click in there and backspace and just change it to 1.75. Now I can also see the time estimate at this stage, and I can see right here that it's going to take one hour and 31 minutes to print. So I'm now ready to click on the download button. When I download this file, you'll see that it will download as a .hvs file. The 3D printer, the Cubicon.style printer, reads .hvs files. I'm going to click on download. And you'll see here it's coming up as Julian nameplate dash 011.hvs. That is correct. I know that that is the 
proper format that the Cubicon style will read. I am now going to click Save. Now it says Download Complete. I'm just going to Show in Folder. And I know that it's currently downloaded onto my Chromebook, but I actually want to make sure that it's put into my USB drive so that I can stick the USB into the printer and just get going. So I'm just going to click it and I'm going to drag it over to my USB drive. And then when I look in my USB drive, I can see at the very top, it says Julian nameplate .hvs, and I'm now ready to insert my USB or SD card into the 3D printer. Don't forget to click on eject so that you safely remove your hardware.